Hello, I'm Victor, an engineer and co-founder of ScaffCalc, the world's least annoying scaffolding software. We made it not boring, we made it web-based, and we gave it just a handful of buttons, because who has time for a hundred tiny icons? So today I'm recreating a scaffold I walk past every single day on my way to work, put up by our friends over at TBS. Do I know the measurements off the top of my head? No, I don't. Am I just winging it? Of course, so let's crack on, shall we? All right, here is the building. I happen to know the address. I've imported it right here with the ScaffCalc's handy maps tool. Now, imported buildings are usually quite close in width and depth, but height, yeah, that's sometimes a bit off. So we use Google Earth's height from sea level trick to get it sorted. Street level minus sea level to get the height of each part. Subtractions involved. Once I've got that, I rotate the building so it lines up with our one by one meter grid. Great for measurements and much less frustrating than twisting your neck. Moving on. There's a penthouse at the top here. So I'm measuring its height along with the roof dimensions to get a good overview. Since we won't be adding scaffolding around the penthouse, I'm eyeballing it and adjusting the height based on Google Earth's measurements. Looks like it's about two meters. The roof seems to measure around three meters from top to bottom. So I'm checking that and making sure it fits within our structure. Right, let's talk about this bay window. This little feature popping out of the building that clearly just has to be there. I'm eyeballing it, but if you're fancy, you can go and get more exact measurements on Google Maps. For me though, I'll pop a box right here, fixing the height, and let's call it a day. One thing to note with the software is that you can't place roofs on top of polygons, so I'm creating a one meter high box here to match what we see on Google Earth. Next, I'll rotate the roof for alignment. Seems like it's about one meter in height as well, so I'm updating that. Now, time for a reality check. Before placing the first bay, I'm tweaking settings on the right-hand menu to speed up my workflow. Now, let's get to the fun bit, the scaffolding. Looks like they've gone with three meter bays and a one meter bay, probably smaller here at the edge. I drag out five of them, adjust here and there. The height seems to be 22 and a half meters. There's a walkway at the bottom. So the first working level starts at two and a half meters up. And why? Well, because suites are tall, or at least that's what we like to think of ourselves. Adding a bay to an existing one connects them automatically and you'll need to ditch the guardrails where they're not needed. Just pop over to the right menu and sort it out. Easy. Here I'm getting rid of the guardrails by selecting the bay and unchecking the option on the right side. I like to use the navigator in the top right corner to position myself better on top. Right, here's where things get a bit tricky. TBS went and used consoles to close gaps. I eventually got my head around it. I used our new corner tool, which by the way, now has more options than you could ever need. So corners are sorted. And just a heads up, when you're doing corners, you need to match the previous bay with. Took me a minute to remember that one, didn't it? Anyway, you'll see a purple dot where standards are shared. And I mean, different manufacturers have different specs, so keep track of what's possible with your supplier. Scafcalc's got tons of manufacturers available, but we can't babysit every single one, all right? As you can see, the software recognizes when you're placing scaffolding on a roof, so the standards are automatically adjusted to fit. Seems like I got the consoles matched almost perfectly here. Now that we got our base, it's roof time. 
I drag and drop more base. Card rails magically appear where they're supposed to. The extra ones, use box mode, right menu, delete. Gone. Next up, diagonals. TBS follows national requirements by adding diagonals every fifth bay. So I'll try to replicate that here as closely as possible. Zigzag patterns, like a proper hockey setup. I toss in a staircase for access. I'll make sure the staircase matches the length of the bay behind it. Guard rails are popping up again, so let's adjust that. Box mode, select guard rails and deselect the outer guard rail. Now we're ready to continue with the facade. Accidentally had the staircase selected there. Make sure you're using the bay tool when adding bays or you'll be sorely disappointed. Right, let's adjust for this bay window. I'm tweaking the console dimensions, playing around with widths to get that perfect fit. But it's not like I'm actually on site, right? I'm way too comfortable here at my desk sipping my coffee, so I'm leaving the real scaffolding to the pros. I'm uh, eyeballing a bit here, don't judge. The reality is, if I were actually out on the yard, I'd just grab whatever size I had lying around and make do. Just like you would. Counted the levels on the real scaffold, made a few adjustments. Multiple base selected with a quick shift click. I'll adjust lengths here and there to get a better fit. This bay you see here is an unusual measurement and Haki doesn't have the full set of components for this dimension so I'm adjusting it to a more common size. All right, we are in the home stretch. Some final diagonals, a loading bay, and we are nearly done. TBS has diagonals every fifth bay and a loading bay set up right here. I see more guardrails in the way, so let's get rid of those with the select delete option. All right, this setup is looking good. TBS also has fall protection on the roof, but we'll skip that in this video. You can add fall protection in the advanced settings on the right hand menu if needed. Please subscribe and stuff because we put out videos now and then and it would be fantastic to see you over there commenting and liking and whatnot. I'll check the fit again using the navigation control in the top right corner. You can pan with left click, rotate with right click and zoom with the scroll wheel. For one last check, I toggle camera perspective to match the form with the real image, all looking solid. TBS has closed the consoles with guardrails and tow boards. This is a limitation in our current version since we only use components from the supplier's catalog. But remember to close your consoles on site. Now the piece de resistance, saving and exporting. 
I pop in the properties, which sets up standard loads and anchor forces. And for the love of scaffolding, fill out the feedback form. That's how we keep making this software smarter, quicker and slightly less prone to guardrail drama. And all the things that makes this a quote-ready masterpiece, like volume, area, weight, gear list, the works. Export it in whatever format you fancy. Thanks for watching! We've got the base, the diagonals, the quotes, all the essentials. Catch you next time, and remember, Skafkal's got your back even when you're just guessing half the time. See you in a bit!